Okay, we are at E3 and we're privileged to be joined by Kei Inafune here who has uh, brought his game Mighty Number no. 9, a game that I guess it's sort of like a game you wanted to make and your fans wanted to make, but perhaps, you know, things didn't come together so you could make it. So can, can you tell us a little bit what Mighty Number Mind, uh, no. 9 means to you personally to be able to make this game? So, you know, this is kind of a retro, you know, a classical uh, style of Japanese action game. And it's always been my passion uh, about this kind of genre of the game that I want to make. And uh, for many reasons, I couldn't have done it. But now, you know, thanks for the Kickstarter help, uh, you know, we can make this game with the fans, uh, with the backers together. And now it's finally come together and we can show this at E3. It's in really good shape right now. For me, like for, from the outside, I feel like the Kickstarter process is something that perhaps would be a little bit foreign to Japanese game development. Uh, how, how did you sort of uh, take to the Kickstarter process and, and letting people see something very early and so on and so forth? So, of course, uh, making games through Kickstarter is uh, definitely a new way uh, that for most of the game developers in Japan and I think uh, the way we did it uh, with the backers together, it was really nice and smooth. And uh, since now the game is coming together, we can actually show that to uh, in E3. That means we are actually doing you know this project really nicely, and it's a success in a way. So I think with this uh, almost like example, people should feel more comfortable about you know uh, backing a game in Kickstarter or making even making a game in Kickstarter. So. It's a sort of you know a new way for game developers to make games. So, uh, what do you say? Obviously, there is great interest in in this sort of game. What do you say is is the sort of the key to this sort of Mega Man esque action platformer? What what is it that you need to sort of bring out there to make it make it truly great? So up until now, uh, most of the two D side score games, action games, are you know the progress is very slow, nice and slow. Take it easy, play it safe, some, something in that sort. But with this game, the, we, a feature we added in it is the uh, absorption dash. So that allows players to go really fast and uh, the overall game tempo is really fast, fast paced. So, uh, you know, that's the sense of speed, I think, is something new. And uh, that's something that we want to introduce with my number nine. I also think that th that is something that lends itself so that if you're really skilled, you can really see how, how skilled you are chaining together dashes and sort of just making it sort of fluid motion of, of the action. Generally speaking, the players you know, who like to post, post their gameplay videos on YouTube or you know, the skilled players want to show off. That's the, the basic uh, mindset of players who play these kind of games. And uh, with the absorption dash, they can actually read you know, clearly, s players can clearly see who's good at this game or not. So we actually had that in mind when we were making the game. So I think once this game gets released and people are starting to play on YouTube or Twitch, t uh, Twitch, uh, you know, they can really show off with a speed run or 100% uh, you know, absorption rate, uh, combo chains, all that kind of stuff. So you know, that's kind of things that we had in mind and uh, we're aiming for. So uh, it is. It is a very sort of. So if, if you will, a brave new world for you, the way you make games these days, you collaborate with different companies. Now we, we learned about Record that you're collaborating with, with Armature and, and, and this game is also a collaboration. Uh, how, how is that sort of role for you, a sort of, a sort of uh, the, the spider in the middle of the web, if you will? When you are you know, working with different uh, partners or different companies all together, uh, the main thing I, I like to keep in mind is to keep the, the core concept consistent. And uh, I myself is the one who has to keep that concept clear and consistent. So it doesn't matter how many uh, companies we're bringing in. I, as long as I have that clear vision, we can always get back to that uh, source and then think, uh, solve the problems that we have at that point. So my job is, so to say, keep the vision clear and consistent. So uh, if we if we talk a little bit about Beck, the, the main character of, of Mighty Number no. Nine, how would you describe him, and, and what what kind of character is he, and, and what does he represent? So the Mighty Number no. Nine, uh, actually the uh, Mighty Numbers, is actually a, a, a full robot combatant team uh, that's competing in a tournament, what we call in the Colosseum. And you know, Mighty Numbers is one of the strongest team out there. 
And Beck, the, the number nine of the, uh, the team, is actually the weak link. So he's the weak, weakest one, and he doesn't really have any special you know, moves or ability to shine. So, but with this you know, instant, the uh, computer virus broke out, all the mic numbers got affected, and only Beck was fine. So it's pretty much now up to him to save his siblings and save the world. And as Beck go along, he realized his ability is actually something super strong, which is to absorb or scan or copy uh, his opponents or uh, any other robot's ability. So he can learn things from them, he can copy their powers, and that's how Beck is, is growing stronger and stronger. And uh, he, the more he absorbs, the more he learns, he'll become more confident. So it's kind of a journey of he, Beck growing up to be the strongest robots in Mike Numbers. So uh, how do you consider Mighty Number now, uh, now that the game is almost done, it's, it's a little bit left? Is, is this a franchise that you hope to continue on or, or is this like a one-off to, to sort of celebrate your, your past and, and, and the future? We are definitely thinking to expand the franchise, uh, you know, not only to 2D side, side scroll games, but maybe a, a, a game in different genre, say, you know, TPS, FPS, something like that. I'm just like you know spitting ideas right now but you know this is definitely something we're thinking you know to expand the franchise and grow the uh, franchise or the IP from here on yes I would just like to say thank you very much for for talking to us it's a pleasure and thank you for all your mm, thank you